Uh, my name is Jack Frisbee. Uh, what I want to just share pretty quickly with you guys um, are some tips on LinkedIn. About three years ago, like maybe a lot of you guys, I was you know kind of on LinkedIn, but I didn't really get LinkedIn. And so I kind of jumped in and thought, well, I, I got to this thing out and see if there's value in LinkedIn. So I'm kind of a, I'm a sales guy. I teach sales training and so forth. And so I was trying to figure out, you know, if LinkedIn was just a tool or just a monumental waste of time. And I hear two people talking about, about LinkedIn as a, a social media. Um, my perspective on that is LinkedIn is not social media. LinkedIn is a ginormous database, right? So LinkedIn just in July uh, passed 500 million users, half a billion users. So basically like one out of every 14 people on planet Earth is on LinkedIn, has a profile on LinkedIn. And so LinkedIn is useful primarily for conducting business to business, and LinkedIn is useful for services and job search. Is that me moving in a place I shouldn't be? Yeah, I, think I need to stay. Yeah, I need to stay put. Really, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be tough. Now I'm really in a bad mood. So, um, so what I just want to talk with you briefly about is your LinkedIn profile. So as I started to say about a couple, two or three years ago, I was, I just kind of jumped into LinkedIn to see if it really was a tool that I thought would be useful primarily for making connections from a sales related perspective. One, one kind of a quick little um, tidbit that I'll share with you is um, on LinkedIn I have about 2200 contacts on LinkedIn, first degree connections. About 1600 of those are Indianapolis based. So I have a pop quiz for you. So if I have 1600 first degree connections on LinkedIn, how many second degree connections do you think I have? Indianapolis based, so 1600 Indianapolis based. How many second degree? How many? You know, it's interesting that you say that. I, I probably shouldn't be asking a techie crowd that question because like I always ask this question like in sales related kind of crowds and the most I've ever gotten was actually this morning a guy said 100,000. And so that guy like came closer than anybody I've ever asked that. Now millions a little excessive, but the number is actually 225,000. Okay, so the power of that is that in the city of Indianapolis, greater Indianapolis area, what that really means is that I'm one person away from an introduction to 225,000 people, right? So LinkedIn is a ginormous database. The second advantage of LinkedIn is that it's searchable. So I can search by title, I can search by keywords and so forth. So if I'm looking to make a job change or I'm looking to connect with somebody in a sales related area, um, I can search LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn, when it was bought by Microsoft, um, they did some really stupid things. They took away some of the search filters from the free version, and I think they got a lot of pushback on that. And so what happened was, I think they started to realize that if the free version caves in, we're screwed, right? Because then all those users go away, and they're not gonna have anybody to pay for the paid version. And so they restored some of those search filters um, fairly recently, actually, in the free version. So unless you're a heavy user of LinkedIn, don't go buy the premium version or Sales Navigator. I have Sales Navigator because I use it a lot, but the free version now has the basic search filters that you need. So, um, <clears throat> so that's just kind of a little bit of background from my perspective on LinkedIn. Um, and so again, I, I say that LinkedIn is not social media because again, from my perspective, it's just a big database. And so I can go search that database and I can make connections with people as I want to. Um, I don't really post a lot. I mean, I do post on LinkedIn, but I don't really consider that something that's going to drive business. Um, I mean, it's okay to do that sort of thing, but it's, it's really the value in making the human connections through LinkedIn. So what I want to hit um, are just some quick things in terms of um, optimizing your LinkedIn profile, because the reality is, is that, you know, people do use LinkedIn a lot today to sort of check out who you are, right? So if you get introduced to somebody whether it's online or you know uh, person to person, one of the first things that they'll do is they'll check out your LinkedIn profile. And so my contention is, you know, it's it's there. It's your sort of your marketing message to the world. And so you want to make a good first impression on your profile. And so um, what I would suggest to you is, you're thinking about your LinkedIn profile, is um, you really want to you really want to gear that message toward your target audience. And so again, it's your marketing message to the world. And so, you know, what is, what is that message? Now I realize I'm speaking to a lot of technical people here, not, not so much, you know, sales and marketing people, but again, even if it's in terms of maybe potentially looking for a job or just whatever kind of connection, um, it really all has to start with 
carefully understanding like who your ideal prospect or who the person is, who's the audience that you're trying to communicate. Now this is actually geared more towards a sales audience here, so I didn't change this slide, but so the idea is like, who is it that I'm really trying to communicate to in my LinkedIn profile? And I think this is where a lot of people really kind of fail to start here, right? So if I'm clear about for whom this message is being communicated, then it's going to shape everything I say in that. But if I'm not, right, now it's just, yeah, I'll just kind of write my profile, write my summary and so forth, and I'll just kind of put stuff in there, then obviously it's not going to be focused. And so, uh, you know, we really want to start with a clear understanding of who that prospect or who that target is that we're trying to, um, again, let me just blow by a couple things here. So uh, what I want to suggest in kind of a business-to-business -business environment is when you think about your LinkedIn profile, because LinkedIn is primarily business-to-business, -business, Facebook is more personal, but in a business-to-business -business environment, when you're thinking about for whom am I writing this message, um, in that business-to-business -business environment, it's really kind of five factors that we're looking at. What's the title of the person? You know, CTO, CIO, whatever that you might be focused in on. Um, you know, what's the size of the business? Um, and then I would say the third key thing here is geography. And so, you know, if you're really more concerned, like most of my business is, is person to person. So I'm more concerned about the 1,600 first degree connections that I have around central Indiana than I am, say, the other 600 folks that are not in central Indiana. And so that geography is sort of where I live, right? I mean, I do some things online as well, but that's really where my focus is. And so when you think about the title and the size of business and the geography, I would say that you can really kind of stop there. Now, when you're in a sales situation, you know, you need to look at your average size of sale and what it is that you're selling to these people. But, you know, for, for your usage, I, I would say that when you think about LinkedIn and, and how you're trying to formulate or trying to kind of put together your, your uh, LinkedIn profile, it's really about, you know, who is that target by title, by size of company, and by geography, okay? Um, and so that's really where we want to focus the messaging, and so that's tip number one. Tip number two is the way I think is the most effective way to do this is to think in terms of kind of an SEO perspective. So if I were looking at somebody finding me from a search engine optimization perspective, you know, what would be the top 10 key words that somebody might use if they were searching for a guy like me or a gal like me, right? The things that I do. And so this requires a little discipline to just kind of sit down and say, okay, well, what are those maybe top 10 keyword search terms, okay? And then those key terms, I would contend, those key terms really need to um, sort of be pervasive throughout your, your LinkedIn profile. Um, whoops. So... Uh, what are the words and phrases that my ideal prospect would use? So more from a sales perspective, but, but whoever your target is, what are those key words and phrases that they would use? Um, and so it, your LinkedIn profile, as I said, has to be populated around those key phrases. Um, and so what that does is it communicates clearly that, you know, that you're an expert. So again, LinkedIn is used in a lot of different ways. Like, for example, if I'm meeting with somebody Maybe I get introduced to somebody and I'm meeting them for coffee or whatever, and I've never met them before. What am I going to do? I'm going to pull up their LinkedIn profile, like sitting in Starbucks or whatever, and I'm going to look at their picture to see who the guy walks in, right? So I know who it is. So it's just, there's a huge use of LinkedIn for just kind of sort of stalking people, you know, just kind of finding something out about them. And so when somebody sort of swerves into you because they get introduced to you or because you've reached out to them, maybe you've leveraged the power of the relationship, the power of an introduction, and you've gotten introduced to them now, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to look at your LinkedIn profile. And so if they go to your LinkedIn profile and they see that, like, everything on your profile speaks to your expertise, then that's obviously going to enable you to put a good foot forward as opposed to if it doesn't, if it's just sort of random and sort of arbitrary, then you're not putting your, your best foot forward, right? So... I would just contend that we want to make sure that we're communicating clearly. I don't know what that was, but um, so let me see. Um, I'm having a hard time. I can't see the screen very well here, so I'm, normally I don't like to turn back there. So let me talk about the five areas of your LinkedIn profile that I think are the most important areas for you to populate those areas with your, um, your key search terms. So number one, clearly the most important thing on 
your LinkedIn profile is your, is your headline. So the first thing that people will do when they look at your profile is they'll look at your picture. So that's the first thing they look at. And then, but the most important thing that they'll look at is your headline. And you have about, I think it's 140 characters in your headline, so about the same as Twitter. And so what happens oftentimes, I'll see uh, somebody on their um, LinkedIn headline, they'll have their job title. And what that says very clearly to me is that they didn't optimize their LinkedIn headline, right? Because your LinkedIn profile, um, it defaults to your current job title. So that just says, well, that person was just lazy. They just have their current job title in there, right? But that, that's primary real estate. So your headline is the most important real estate in your entire profile. And so you really want to make sure that, you know, that's speaking very clearly to people about what your area of expertise is. Because that's a thing, that's just that short little pithy kind of a think in terms of a tweet. You know, it's a quick message to kind of capture who you are. Okay? Um, and so uh, they get a quick look. So again, you can see in my case, um, so normally you would want to populate this with SEO terms. Now, in my case, I happen to be an author of a book, and so I'm sort of betting that people will see the fact that I've written a book as, as being something substantial, right? And so I have on there, you know, I've, I've, I've chosen to take up space in my headline saying that I'm the author of a book called Stop Selling, Start Serving. But if I hadn't been the author of a book, then every, every character in that headline would be search term related kind of stuff, right? And so obviously you have to word it in such a way. And, and just a quick little trick here, knowing that you have about 140 characters, you know, the best way to do this, I think, is just to get a, go to a Word doc and kind of play around with it, you know, count the characters until you get to a place where you pretty much have filled up your space and then just go uh, dump it into LinkedIn. Um, so I said that already. Uh, the next thing is optimizing your summary. And so what I would say to you is the most important real estate um, as I mentioned, is your headline, but the most substantive real estate on your LinkedIn profile really is your summary, because that's free form. It's you can write, you know, anything you want there. It's something like 2,000 characters. There's a lot of space there for you to kind of write what you want to, and so this is a space where some of you are familiar with Simon Sinek wrote, um, "Start with Why," and and so to me, this is a place for you to kind of share your passion, to tell your story, to to let people get a, a glimpse of who you are. Right, kind of what, what makes you tick? You know, what is your why? What, what gets you up in the morning? What are you passionate about? You know, what do you get excited about? And if you can tell that story in a way that's sort of natural to you, one thing I would strongly suggest to you is do not write your summary in the third person. Like, you know, you're all that or something, you know, like, well, Jack Frisbee is blah, 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 you know? Because uh, that's just not what that's for. It's, it's really for you to sort of tell your story. Again, think about somebody, you're sitting face to face with somebody. And they say, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, that's how you want to tell that story. And so if you tell a little bit about, hey, you know, here's why I get jazzed up in the morning. You know, I love doing what I do. And, and so this is a little bit about me and, and my why. And, uh, well, I don't know what that is, but um, I'm not sure. What's going on here? This thing is like on fire, man. It's moving without me. Okay, there we go. Um, so the thing with your profile is uh, what you don't want to do is have it appear, like come across real mechanical, like, oh, this person just took a bunch of keywords and like stashed them into their profile, into their summary, right? So when you write that, I think you want to, it's, it's a narrative, it's you telling your story, but what I would suggest is you write your narrative and then you have your list of top 10 key search terms and then you say, okay, now how could I strategically kind of fit those in to that summary, into the narrative, right? So that it just flows a little bit um, and it doesn't feel kind of stodgy. And then down at the bottom of your summary, I would also suggest that you leave places for, you know, basically stuff that you didn't get a chance to really talk about. Whoop. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, you know, any, any kind of specialties that you might have. It's just a place to kind of a laundry list down at the bottom. Number two is um, I, I'm a big believer that if somebody's taken the time to read your summary, you should make it easy for them to connect with you. So email, telephone number, whatever you feel comfortable putting in there. There's also a contact section within your profile as well. But if somebody finishes reading my summary and maybe there's something that would compel them to want to connect with me, then I want to put information in there that makes it easy for them. Um, and then a thank you and an invitation to connect. Okay? And so have fun with your summary. Just, again, make it, you know, it, let, it, let it be an expression of who you are. Um, the next one is your experience. 
And so in your experience, which is basically your job experience history, okay? So LinkedIn is not your resume. So what I would suggest to you is that all of your experience, like you can write whatever you want to. I'm not suggesting that you like write things that aren't true, of course. But, you know, there's no, there's no like standard way that you have to write that stuff. You don't have, like, let's say, for example, you had like a bomb of a job. You went and worked for some crazy person for three months and then, you quit or got fired, right? You don't have to include that in your experience. There's no, like, nobody says that you gotta include every single thing of experience. So take your experience section and kind of create this thing that really kind of communicates to people where your expertise is now, right? So now maybe you've done a variety of different things and not everything you've done in the past necessarily kind of points to what you're doing today. But think that through a little bit in terms of what can I say about what I've done in the past that kind of gives people the idea that, gosh, this guy's been kind of doing this thing for a long time, or he's been doing a lot of things that have now kind of come together so that now his real expertise is this. Does that make sense? So you can kind of craft your experiences. Uh, it's really up to you to kind of craft that in a way that sort of tells your story in the best way possible. And, and don't make your experience section about, like don't make it look like a resume. Like, well, he did this and this, these were all his job responsibilities. Again, it's more of a place, in my, my view, to tell your story about kind of where you've been. Does that make sense, the difference there that I'm suggesting? Um, and again, search terms. And so, for example, I, um, I do a lot of sales training and business development, business growth training and coaching. I've had positions in the past, uh, for example, I was the president of a thing called the Character Council of Indiana. I didn't do sales training when I was there, but I did a lot of public speaking when I was there, right? So I can sort of frame that ex experience as to say, hey, I, you know, I didn't do sales training. I, well, I wouldn't say that, but so obviously I can't highlight that because I didn't do that there. But what I can highlight is that I did a lot of public speaking there. And I can also highlight that I was responsible for the growth of that organization. So people can look at that and say, oh, okay, that's a little bit of a divergence maybe from being a sales coach and trainer, but I can see where, you know, he was able to gain some experience and so forth, all right? So if you go to your experience, you know, you can just, this is just a quick look at mine and, um, oh, I know what that's doing, okay, never mind. Um, the next section is optimizing your skill section. So there's a difference in your experience and your skills. Your skills is essentially, oh, back to the experience thing too. In the experience, um, you can also get recommendations from people. And I strongly recommend that you do that, no pun intended. Um, but you need to get recommendations from people. And so I'm not a fan of people who kind of go, oh, well, I'll go recommend you, and then maybe you'll turn around and recommend me. I just think that's so disingenuous. I think it's stupid, right? Well. So if you've done that, I'm sorry. But um, so what I think, <laughs> didn't mean to offend you, but it is. Um, so what I think really makes sense from, from my perspective is, that, look, if you want somebody to give you a recommendation, go ask them for it, right? And so what I, uh, at one point a couple years ago, when I was kind of blowing up my profile and redoing the whole thing, I just went, I sent out like, you know, several, like 50 <laughs> emails to people that I've done business with. And I said, hey, I'm trying to redo my LinkedIn profile. And... I'm really trying to have it kind of say this. I'm trying to, you know, here are the, the key search terms. I'm kind of trying to have the whole thing revolve around. And I just said, hey, you know, here's some, some terms that, you know, if you feel comfortable including these in a recommendation, great. If not, that's cool. I always give people an out. I don't want to put pressure on them, you know. Um, so anyway, so that's with regard to your recommendations. Um, you know, the average person on LinkedIn has two recommendations. So my advice is don't be average. You know, it just... There's a body of evidence there. If you have lots of recommendations from people, it's like, dang, this guy's got a lot of recommendations, you know? So my, my um, advice would be start with a goal of maybe having 10 recommendations on there and ultimately try to get to 20 recommendations. Nobody's ever, uh, like on the face of the planet, going to read your 20 recommendations, right? But there's, again, there's just sort of this preponderance of evidence that says this guy must know what he's talking about, what he's doing, because he's got a lot of people that are recommending him. So when we get over to the skills section, you know, the skills, um, skills and endorsements section is basically just real kind of pithy, right? So the skills, you get, you get space in your profile for 50 skills. Again, nobody's going to look at all 50 of your skills, right? 
So my contention is, it used to be that on your profile they'd see your top 10. Now they just see your top three unless they actually hit the down button and go look at the rest of them. So just make sure that those top three, again, you're putting your best foot forward. Those are the things you want people to see because they're probably never going to get past that. And I would also suggest to you the same thing as I just said with your recommendations is in the skills section you can get, get endorsements for that. And that's basically just somebody kind of pushing a button and say, yep, this guy is what he says he is, right? So the problem is if you blow up your, your LinkedIn profile and you redo all this stuff and you put a new skill in there as number one, two, or three, let's say, you know, it's a new skill. You don't have any endorsements in there, right? You have no endorsements and you're saying that's like your top skill. That's not good. <laughs> And so again, what I would suggest that you do is reach out to people who know you and just say, hey man, I just recently blew up my LinkedIn profile, I'm redoing this thing, I'm trying to get some endorsements for these skills, would you mind? You know, and I would actually, I would literally, and I've done this, um, I would tell them how to do it. You know, tell them how they need to go about, um, you know, saying that you have this particular skill. Because some people aren't going to know how to do that. And uh, if you don't know how to do it, you know, I can leave my email. You guys feel free to email me. It's jack at optimizedselling.com. I'd be happy to walk you through that. But, um, you know, so you want to make sure that you kind of guide them on how to do that. So, again, I'd just say reach out to 50 people and say, hey, these are some skills that I've added, some things I'm trying to really kind of focus my LinkedIn profile on. Would you mind just endorsing those skills? So that way then if you get, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 of those um, people to respond, now when somebody goes to your profile and they see your top three skills, they're not going to go, this guy said it's his top skill. He has nobody endorsing him for that. Okay? Uh, LinkedIn members who list skills on their profile experience a 13x increase in profile views, which is kind of interesting to me. So if you don't list skills, then um, you're just not going to get viewed. All right? And so, again, I'd say, you know, pick the top ten skills you want to appear first. But, again, LinkedIn's changed that, so now they... they People only see the first three. They have to drop down to see the rest of them. I would still say pick the top ten, but make sure you focus in on the top three. So that's just a quick look at mine. Um, and then we just talked about recommendations. They're brief testimonials. Reach out to people and ask them. Uh, tip number eight would just be a professional picture. I would say the two options here are, you know, have a photographer actually take your picture. Um, you know, just do a headshot. Make sure, you know, don't do a glamour shot. I mean, that's like wanked up. Um, but, you know, just something that looks nice. I would say the alternative to this, for a long time I had an action photo on mine. Uh, this was what I used to have on there. Just Actually, I was teaching a workshop and a guy held my book up and took a picture of me with my book in the foreground. I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So I put that on my LinkedIn profile. I've recently changed it to a profile, but I thought that was kind of cool. Um, looks like a cop there, doesn't it? Um, but anyway, um, and then tip nine is, again, make sure that people can contact you, right? So in your summary and in your contact information. So, um, you know, the thing is, is that people, what, there are some misconceptions about LinkedIn. People think, well, you know, if, uh, if I put, like, you know, if I open up, say, for example, if I open up my connections to the public, then everybody can see who I'm connected with. Well, that's not true. The only people who can see your first-degree connections are the people that you're actually connected to. Same thing is true of your contact information. People are like, ah, I don't want a bunch of people contacting me. Well, LinkedIn's here to stay. It's a good place for people to be able to figure out how to contact you. But guess what? They can't contact you unless they're a first degree connection, right? They can't see your contact information. All they can see is your LinkedIn profile URL. Okay, that makes sense? So again, it's only going to be open to the people that you're connected with anyway. So make it easy for them to contact you. Um, so this is your personal contact information over here. Hit the down button, it shows more information. So I have a website, you know, a couple different parts of our website. I've got my phone number on there. I mean, I never get people that, you know, call in, in an in a, in a inappropriate kind of a way. I mean, you might every once in a while, somebody, you know, stalking you, whatever. But, um, and so on your summary, as I mentioned before, it's a great place for your contact information down there at the bottom. And then number 10, this one's kind of interesting. The last one here, I'll close with this, is um, include your volunteer activity. And I, I just think, you know, volunteerism shows your heartbeat. It kind of shows, like, who you are as a human being, right? Everything else is kind of about work. Your volunteer stuff is really about kind of who you are as a person. This is interesting. 41% of hiring managers think volunteer experience is as important as paid work. That kind of blew my mind when I read that. That's pretty important, you know? 
So make sure you have volunteer experience in there. Um, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And so I teach a class at my church. I've coached my daughters. I have three daughters. I've coached a girl soccer for like a gazillion years. Um, and I had a guy, I was doing a workshop uh, a couple years ago when I first started doing this, and a guy contacted me and he said, uh, hey, I noticed on your profile that you are involved in youth um, sports. And he said, I'd like to have you come in and do a workshop for my sales team, but I was wondering if you would mind if I um, invite the, the um, executive director for the Boys and Girls Club in Noblesville to come and, and just be a part of that. I'm like, no, man, that'd be, that'd be totally awesome. And the reason he asked me that was because he had read some stuff on my, you know, the volunteer section in my, in my uh, profile. So again, it just kind of tells you, you know, shows your heartbeat a little bit. I think it also demonstrates just a, you know, a strength of character. If you're a person that volunteers in the community and is involved, has some passions for some things other than work, and uh, that's all there is to it, right? So easy peasy, right? Um, and so, you know, I would just say, again, just if, if you think in terms of these 10 things, this is what's really going to help you make a, a positive initial impression with people, whether it's for a job search or, you know, in a sales capacity. Questions? Any questions for Jack? <clears throat> yes, Felix. No, they really don't. So the, no. the question was, no. does, it, does anyone actually care no, about they really don't. No, that's what I'm saying. All it really is is a body of evidence. So the, the most that's going to happen is people are probably going to glance at them, right? But if you've got a bunch of them there, then there's a body of evidence there. Are they going to go through and read, read them all? I doubt very seriously that they are. Yep. But if you don't have them, you know, the absence kind of shows, oh, so nobody's endorsed this guy. I mean, there's just that little chance that maybe somebody kind of goes, hmm, I wonder if this guy's for, huh? You could be endorsed for anything as long as you have something, right? <laughs> well, and again, keep in mind, there's a difference between recommendations and endorsements. Yeah, so they're just clicking on it and just kind of running your number up. Yeah. I mean, my top three, I have like, you know, it caps out at 99. So I've got like 99, I think, on all three of them. So the point of it is just that somebody looks at that and goes, oh, he's got a lot of people that have endorsed him for that. That's it. Don't, yeah, don't, don't overplay that. You had a comment or question? Yeah, one more question here. Right here. I was just going to ask, have you ever refused the LinkedIn contact? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so I do all the time. My rule of thumb on contacts with LinkedIn is um, so for me, you know, LinkedIn is, is about business, and so I'm going to make a business decision about whether or not I want to contact, I want to connect with somebody. And so what I'll do oftentimes, if somebody reaches out to connect with me on LinkedIn, and I don't understand why it is that they, maybe they're from another city or whatever, I don't know them and they want to connect with me, I will just respond back to them. And again, this is a little clunky to be able to do this, but you can actually message them back. And you can say, hey, thanks for reaching out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I was just curious, you know, what were your thoughts in terms of why it might make sense for us to connect on LinkedIn? Nine times out of ten, they won't even respond. So I'm like, aunt, you're out. So I just X them out. And I report them, too, frankly. If I don't know somebody, I do that, click that little thing that says, you know, I didn't know them. I don't know what it does, but... <laughs> um, so I, 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 you know, there are what's, what are called lions, LinkedIn open networkers. Again, I apologize if any of you are lions. Be it. Um, I think in the wrong room for lions. I don't think this yeah. is the lion room. Yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> no, lions are ba basically people who, who respond to every single, you know, they've got 25,000 connections. They're doing exactly what LinkedIn was not intended for. Right? LinkedIn is supposed to be a network of people that you actually know or have some relationship with. So I will yeah. say, this is my last comment, and I want to thank you again, Jack, for coming out and giving us a presentation. Yeah, you owe me pizza, by the way, man. Our first right brain talk. But so two years ago, I went to one of Jack's workshops, and <laughs> just I made some very, very minor changes to my LinkedIn profile based on these top ten tips, and it made a significant change in the amount of people who I was kind of <laughs> reconnecting with, uh, the people who found us for doing new business with. So uh, as much as I'm not a huge, like, LinkedIn, social media, sales-ish type person, this did make a difference 
And I think the stuff that we need to pay attention to as developers. So I really appreciated the, the workshop. And I want to thank you again for coming out tonight and giving us our first. Yeah, I got to say real quick, it was kind of cool because I did the workshop and I was at Launch Fishers and I was working afterwards. And Calvin comes over, he's all excited and he's like, "Man, I did what you said and it really worked." I'm like, "Oh, cool, the scrap actually works." <laughs> 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 so that, that was pretty cool. <laughs> all right, let's give Jack a big round of applause. I want to thank him again.